If you've been watching any of my videos, uh, you may know that I made this ripper attachment for my X580 that I had uh, to fit the sleeve hitch. Well, now that I have the X700 series, I need to adapt it to three point. Not only am I gonna use it still obviously as a ripper, but I'm also gonna redesign it uh, to hold weights a little bit better and be a rear weight bracket. Uh, I didn't wanna go with the click and go system for a weight bracket. I figured I'd have this. I'm gonna adapt it to use for three point and I might as well use it to hang weights. Currently I can fit four on it the way it sets. However, they hang down and I'll be able to lower this a bit lower than the sleeve hitch could. So I'm moving the weights up. That way these ripper shanks can go into the ground a bit further. Um, on the box blade, you can only get down a few inches, but with this, the way I have it designed, I should be able to go quite a bit deeper. So it'll still have its purpose over the ripper shanks that are on the box blade that I have. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna get into it. Uh, I'm not gonna make this quite like the one when I originally built this and was showing every step more in depth. Uh, I'm just gonna give a brief, you know, overview of each step that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the work, maybe get a quick shot of it, and then come back, you know, show you what's assembled or what was done. Um, my goal is to try to not make this one quite so long. So uh, let's get into it. I have here a scale. Uh, I'm going to use this. I want to get another uh, weigh-in of what this currently weighs at because the goal is going to be to make it heavy. I carefully set that on there. About 60 pounds. So not a whole lot. Um, you know, the, the 580 had no problem lifting that by itself. The issue came once you start hanging weights on it. You know, those four weights, that's what, 160, 168 pounds? That's a lot, so. I don't think the, the 700 will have any problem doing that though. So at that, let's get into it. These are the pieces of metal that I'm gonna be adding to the ripper. So they each serve, of course, their different purposes. Uh, this piece is essentially the same as the piece of flat bar that I ran across the front of the original ripper. These pieces are gonna go on the sides um, to seal off that tube, and then they will also come up, meet this bar, uh, to make up the weight bracket. These two pieces are going to be the three-point mast, so the part where the top link will connect. And these two, oh, well, sorry, these pieces are gonna support this just so I have a little bit more contact with the welding onto the main frame. And then these two pieces are gonna be where the lower lift pins are gonna uh, bolt into. And these will also assist in supporting the uh, weight bracket. So I did pre-drill these uh, previously. I'm not gonna try doing that now. I did that the first step before anything because uh, it takes a while. Um, I had to use just my little tabletop drill press. Uh, this is 3 8 material and these are 7 8 inch holes. So it took me I think an hour and seven or eight minutes to drill each one um, and then another three and a half hours to drill these four. Uh, it was a nightmare but got it done so uh, let's move on. Step one is going to be remove this sleeve hitch attachment. Obviously, the center mast where the top link is going to connect has to attach to this, so it can't be there. Um, I'll hang on to it. Who knows, down the road, I may end up building out something else for a sleeve hitch or use it for something. We'll see, but I'm just going to try to grind these welds down as much as I can, try to get this thing off. That's off. Now just got to uh, clean up the weld on the main bar a little bit. All right, got it ground pretty smooth. Uh, there are a couple cuts right here and here. Um, and then maybe a little bit here on the side uh, from when I was cutting it off, the, uh, the cutting wheel that I ended up using kind of nicked that metal a little deeper. So 
I'm gonna weld that shut and then uh, grind that down smooth again. Not too bad. And there we are. Nice smooth surface. No cracks where I'm thinking I'm gonna have to be uh, putting anything over. Uh, there is a crack remaining on one of the corners, but I think it's gonna get covered with weld anyway. If not, I'll just weld it later. My next step is going to be grind these edges and then uh, grind our pieces of metal. These are gonna go here on the side. Um, and this is going to support the weight bracket bar that'll go across the top. Got that edge all cleaned up, got the metal piece all cleaned up. I'm actually gonna go ahead and weld this side right now before doing the other side, just so uh, all that freshly ground metal stays clean. Um, haven't decided yet, honestly. Uh, if I want to fill it with the concrete now and then do the other side or work on some of the other stuff, I'll probably end up filling it now and just doing the other side. It's just going to make this whole thing a, a bit more challenging to move around and manipulate, but everything for the most part will be done from the side that this is sitting on anyway, so maybe it won't be too bad. But I feel like it's going to get more complicated once I uh, hang everything off the back of this. I decided to go ahead and fill it now, so I ground down the other side where I'm going to be welding that end cap on and cleaned up the end cap. So now I'm going to fill it up with concrete. Filled to the top with concrete. Time to weld on the cap. So now that that's all welded on, I got these edges cleaned up. I'm gonna weld on the uh, brackets that are going to hold the lift pins and also act as an additional support for the weight bracket. All right, our lift pin supports are attached. Now we're gonna clean everything up and get this, uh, this weight bracket welded on. All cleaned up, weld it. Got it all welded up. Uh, the next part is we're gonna start the mast. That's gonna be the final part. Um, first off, I gotta cut a little bit off the back. I ordered these as stock sizes rather than cut to length like everything else. I wasn't sure exactly where the height for the mast was gonna fall because it was all gonna depend on uh, where the lower lift pin sat, uh, how far I wanted this ripper to be to the ground uh, once it's lowered. So I got to cut off oh, about three quarters of an inch or so and then uh, and then we'll weld on its angled support pieces and weld it to this and I don't know I might put another support piece along the bottom of it. We'll see what happens but uh, yeah not too much more. So they are trimmed down. Uh, next day we are going to clean these up and weld those pieces at angle on there and that is going to support these to you know, keep them at a 90 degree angle from the rest of the bar and the weight brackets there. Got my angle iron welded up on there. Next, I uh, have a couple metal spacers. I'm going to use these in these two holes along with some bolts. And then I have a wood block that I cut to a two inch width. Uh, I'm going to space these about two inches apart. Um, I'm going to use this one at the bottom end uh, and I'm going to make sure that's all uh, snug together before I weld it on here because I want to make sure that my spacing is good and that's a good way to do it. So I'm going to get this clamped up. Uh, I'll clean it real quick and well I'll clean it then clamp it and then uh, get her welded and should be about done with the fabrication part at that point. We'll see if I have to add any extra pieces to hold weights in place um, and then I'll have to see 
if I want to weld, I might put a support piece along the bottom here to help tie the bottom ends of this together. But uh, again, we'll see what I feel like. And here is the almost finished product. So I got, uh, I got everything welded up. Um, I didn't add any reinforcement to the bottom. Uh, I think it's fine as much as those two angles are welded on. And then it's welded to the weight bracket here. Um, plus this spacer and bolt will be staying in. So it, it's got plenty of support. I don't think I need to worry about it too much at the bottom. Uh, most of the stress is on the lift pins. And then the little bit that's on the mast really is just at the top link at the very top. Um, this isn't really doing a whole lot to support the weight. It's more so on the ends and the, the lift pins. So, um, I did add these two pieces of metal. Um, they're just there to keep the weights from sliding. Essentially, there's not enough room uh, for more than three weights on either side. So I put them there just so that they don't slide around and, you know, clank around as much. So I got lucky when I did it originally because this piece, the weights were supposed to go on here. But at the last minute, I ordered this piece of metal uh, thicker than I originally anticipated. So then the weights didn't fit. They fit out here. And luckily, there was just enough room to get two on there. Um, and then it fit perfect with the pins that went through here. So I ended up getting really lucky on this one. But this one was more, more planned out. Um, I knew I was going to be able to get at least three on there. Um, and then, yeah, I figured I would just put metal there to stop it. Just how, like how this one did before. So... Worked out great. So now uh, I'm gonna throw it on the tractor, see how it see how it works, and uh, if all goes well there, I'll uh, get it painted, and we'll see you then. And this is what it looks like after uh, cutting out the uh, corners. I angled a lot of the corners to 45s just to make it a little more presentable, a little bit less crude. Um, I think it definitely helped it. Looks pretty good. Um, I did test it on the tractor. Uh, I'm getting ready to wipe it down and paint it now. So I took the lift pins back off. Um, I took the center pin here back off. Uh, the only reason it had one there is I was using the box blade as a reference. It has a pin in there. So that's why I have one. Um, I think part of it has to do with adjustability of three-point hitches. I know depending on your hitch, the front of your box blade tells you to uh, use the lower pin, I think. I don't know if that's for a Cat 1 setup. And I think Cat 1, you flip the pins, the lift pins to the inside. But yeah, get, like I said, get ready to wipe it down and get it painted. And here is the finished product. Actually turned out pretty good for the most part. I finished off one can of the green that I had, had to use another. Um, some on the back side didn't seem to get as shiny. You can't really tell from here. But some of it from that first can didn't really shine up. But it was just on the back side that I did first. Uh, when I did the front side, that definitely got some shine to it. So luckily the side everyone sees looks pretty good. So now I'm going to put on the lower lift pins and the brace and that lower uh, area on the mast there. We'll put those on. Then I'm going to get another weight. Uh, I'm going to try holding it and standing on the scale myself. And then, uh, you know, I'll figure it out based off that. But I got two different weights when I went back through and looked. They ended up being like two pounds off. So... I'm not sure how accurate it is, so I figure if I get a third measurement, I'll know for sure how much this actually weighs. A 
looking pretty good with the pins. I also had to do a little bit of a paint touch up, but it's all right. Of course, I'm extra, so making some decals, dress this thing up a bit. Here's our decals, got my JGG, Josh's Green Garage logo. This thing looks sick. I am so glad at how that turned out. All I got left to do is the data plate. Here is the finished product uh, hooked up to the tractor. I am incredibly uh, happy with how this thing turned out. It, it looked great. Uh, it's exactly what I had envisioned in my head. I didn't really make this off of any blueprints. I don't have any good programs to design anything really. Um, I didn't draw it up. Pretty much just thought about what I needed to do. Um, I did kind of do like a diagram in Microsoft Word, just like laying out sizes just to make sure everything was going to have clearance as far as the weights go and whatnot. But uh, other than that, like this is literally just me dreaming it up and then building it. So pretty happy with it. Uh, obviously, I don't have ripper shanks or weights on it right now, but uh, it can hold six of the John Deere 42 pound suitcase, suitcase weights. Um, you know, and then the ripper shanks. Uh, there is clearance for the ripper shanks that when not in use and using this just as a weight bracket, uh, they can be in the up position. So these ones will kind of angle forward. This one unfortunately has to angle backward. Uh, it's a little bit goofy, but it is what it is. There unfortunately isn't enough clearance through here uh, with the top link mount. Um, but yeah, other than that, you know, it's, it's exactly what I was, you know, looking to build. I'm extremely happy. Um, it ended up being 108 pounds. I'm not sure if I ever came to that final conclusion or not. I did a bunch of averaging to get a really good weight on it, but 108 pounds as it sits uh, right now. The only addition I would have to make is add the shanks. I included the ripper shanks because I figure they're going to be on it pretty much all the time anyway. Uh, that you know, it's just easier to store them on the thing rather than you know have to find somewhere else to set them. So. So that's it for now. Um, I'll get this thing raised up and then uh, I'll just show a quick shot of it with the ripper shanks on. Uh, I'm not going to hang any weights on it right now. It still looks really nice. I want to get some good pictures and whatnot of it before I actually, uh, you know, scratch it up, gouge it up, whatever. Uh, I've sprayed the paint pretty thick through here, but it's still going to come right off. I know it. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching this. Hopefully you enjoyed the build. Uh, I tried to make it flow a bit quicker, um, didn't go into quite as much detail, but if you are looking to build something like this, feel free to email me. I will get you the information. Um, I'll, you know, send a material list of what all I got for it. 
Um, minus some of the hardware. Some of the hardware you'll probably have to figure out. Like I know this bolt and whatnot I got at uh, a local hardware store. So you're gonna have to just you'll have to find it. I can tell you what it is, but you'll have to source some of it. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. Have a good one. So you've been watching every second of this video, loving every minute of it, and now you're thinking, I gotta have one of these, I gotta build one of these, what can I do? Well, I mentioned earlier, you can let me know and I can get you a materials list. Well now, I can do you one better. I sat down, made up some plans. So I'm gonna be selling these plans. It's got everything you need to build this ripper in it. I got dimensions drawn up. I've got color-coded materials list. Everything is in here to build this ripper, even all kinds of little tips and tricks to make sure you don't have alignment problems. I did all the math to make sure you get the lift pins set in the right spot. Everything you need to know. So I'm going to have this posted on eBay. You'll be able to buy this set of plans. You're actually buying something rather than just a file. So that's kind of nice. And then additionally on there, there'll be links below for this. And there'll also be links for the sticker set for it and then a data plate individually. So the data plate that you can see on some of the pictures, I'll make a special data plate for you. It'll have your name on it, everything like that. So pretty cool stuff. So if you're interested, please follow the eBay links. You know, if you want all the stuff, you can add all three to the cart and uh, purchase it, and then you'll get the book, the stickers, and a data plate. So pretty cool stuff. Also, if you're building it for a different kind of tractor, whether it be a Kubota, a New Holland, you know, whatever subcompact tractor, or if you have an older garden tractor, um, and you're painting it a different color, I can redesign decals or whatever to make it fit that style of machine. Obviously, these are styled to be, you know, like the John Deere's, but I can do whatever. So again, thanks for watching. Have a good one.